Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today I'm going to be talking about the CCC rerun, the event that's going to be coming after the Valentine's Day event in North America. It is the event where you get the 4CC, the 4CC, the 4BB. I don't know what's going on with me today. I've been messing up nonstop. I digress. But today I'm going to go over the event itself, kind of look at what's, what's coming up and then all the units that are coming with it as well. So I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. Comment, tell me if you're planning on summoning. I know a lot of people were looking forward to King Protea this year. I know if you're a big fan of Sakura, this month is going to be pretty rough because in a week from when the event starts, King Protea comes out and then in literally a month later, uh, Kama comes out and that's really rough. It's a... I guess it's a big, great time if you're a big fan of Sakura, but it is a terrible time if you are someone who does not have a lot of luck on your side and or money. But hey, at least you get a free BB. Um, so yeah, let's let's go over the events. Let me see. So first things first, of course, we have BB. She's the free four. She's the only free and the only four star as of this video moon cancer unit. She's really good. She has a single target um, arts uh, noble phantasm. Her skills are pretty solid as well. As you can see, her build is right here: two quick, two arts, one buster. She has like, a very low death rate to the point that she was used for the King Asan challenge quest. At least she was in JP in North America. You couldn't really use her because they fixed our version of the King Asan challenge quest, making it harder for North America compared to JP. But I digress. Um, she's pretty solid. She's nice to have. Moon Cancer is really only effective against <laughs> Avengers. Not a lot of those in the game, but every once in a while it's nice to have her. And of course, her Noble Phantasm does deal a good chunk of damage. And along with her healing and her ability to kind of stun, she can actually be used to stall pretty nicely. So definitely a unit worth getting. So play the event to get her. Um, here's something that's really weird. I don't know if it's really mentioned a whole- I think- I want to say it's mentioned, but this is technically a part of the Epic of Remnant story stuff. Not like in the sense of like, oh, you need to be playing the Epic of Remnant. You do need to clear Solomon to be able to play it. Um, there are technically speaking four Epics of Remnants, but a lot of people consider this event, um, an Epic of Remnant itself. Because one, there's so much story, this event is insanely long, and there's a lot of story to it. There's a lot of story to it. It's very good. It's very long, but it's very good. So it's kind of worth it, I'd say. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. This will technically come back, but you won't be able to experience it the same way. At least I don't think so. I don't think you get to have the giant naked woman um, if you play, if you, the, there's, the map is like in the size of a big naked woman and you go to like her boobs and her thighs and stuff. I don't know if they included that in the, thing they do later but i i'm not 100 percent sure on that so either way make sure to play this event if you can beat solomon um okay let's move on to now no of course this tab doesn't have the banner that comes with it so let me go here one moment okay here we go um, this is Banner 1. It has Melt, it has Passion Lip, it has Suzuki Gozen, it has Emmy Alter, and it has Robin Hood if you're a big fan of Robin Hood and you somehow do not have him 5 already. Um, take a quick look at Melt. Melt is very good. She is quick focused. A lot of her, she is a single target quick. She is an Alter Ego, so she's effective against the Knight class, but weak against the, no, she's effective against the Calvary, Calvary class, which is Caster... Assassin, Rider, but she's weak against the Knight class, which is Lancer, Bow, and Sword. Saber. Whatever. Um, but she is very good. She increases her own quick performance because of her passive skill, Riding B. She has Magic Resistance, Independent Action, Goddess Essence, and she also has her Noble Phantasm here, which deals 1,200% at level 1. There's no way you're getting an MP5 uh, Melt, which if you are, then... You don't need to tell you don't need me to tell you how good she is. And her overcharge effect increases her own quick performance for three turns, 10%. She's a very solid unit. She's very good. As you can see here, she has her own evasion. This get we should have these buffs, I think. Yeah, these strengthening should be coming. 
So she has like a lot of good stuff to go with. On launch, she was a little bit iffy. Like she was extremely strong, but Quick wasn't in the same place that we are today. So she's a pretty um, solid single target Quick servant to have for sure. Like having the ability to have advantage over these set of classes is, is extremely useful. Um, and then we have Passion Lip over here, who is the big, big old tons of fun, two tons of fun girl here. A precious little cinnamon bun. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, she's a defender. Um, she has Breast Valley. She reduces her own damage with that. Her second skill is... Mm, I forget how to pronounce that. It's like macho... Machotistic? No, that's not how you say it. But Mach Machistic? Machoke? No. I don't know why I'm screwing up. Like, I never say... Masochistic. Masochistic. No, that's not right either. It doesn't matter. Either way, this also increases her defense and also gives her some attack and also lets her be... Um, she gives herself a taunt, which lets other people attack her, which is what she wants. And her third skill here increases her own attack once more, ignores invincibility, find her percent chance to grant self on attack uh, active debuff for one attack, 10% chance to in activate instant kill, and she gives herself, she has a 500% chance to stun self for one turn when she uses this. So of course you want to activate um, Breast Valley, which grants you self debuff immunity for three times for five turns, and then activate her third skill. So if you activate her third skill first, um, it's going to be kind of a waste. And I know you're saying who would activate her third skill first? Me. Me. But anyway. She has Magic Resistance C, Independent Action C, Present Concealment A+, and Goddess Essence C. And then, of course, the Noble Phantasm is an AoE, Brunhilda Romantica, not Romantica, Romancia. Um, it is a buster. It deals a good chunk of damage, especially once you upgrade it to C+. Um, it deals damage to all enemies, and it recovers party's HP by a little bit, which goes with her tanking. I personally like her. She's similar to Melt, where... Um, she has advantage over those three classes, and she's Buster. Um, her biggest drawback is probably that she, I don't think she deals enough damage with her Noble Phantasm at times. I've definitely have um, kept some dudes alive by accident uh, using her, but it's fine because her main role here is a tank, and she should work perfectly fine as a tank if you're fighting um, the mentioned Rider, Assassin, or Caster. Okay, and then Suzuki Gozen is good, and I think Emmy Alter is also technically good, but they're not really high on the list of what most people consider. Well, Suzuki Gozen is for sure. She is 100% very much fan loved. Emmy Alter is more. She ha he has a very niche fan group that look past his many many faults, um, and I respect them for going that far for him. And of course, a week after the event comes out, we get the K King Protea summoning campaign. Um, I actually don't remember. Is this? Okay, so there's no Kiara, but there's a reason for that. It's because Kiara shows up a month later. Um, so this is technically Banner 2 now. So this is King Protea featuring Gawain, right? Yeah, Gawain. Tristan and King Protea. Um, <laughs> Gawain is a Buster Gorilla. If you have Merlin, he works great with Merlin. Tristan is a very interesting support archer. He's AoE, but he also gives a lot of evade. Um, as you can see, his Harp of Healing removes own party's mental debuffs and gives everyone an evasion. He's basically like a more a more souped up version of David, which I personally really like David, and I really like this Tristan, actually. I wouldn't mind having him. The only difference, I think, is that Tristan... Is he also single target? He is single target. He's single target quick, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to one enemy. I was like, I don't know why I was like, hey, wait, is he AoE? No, he's not AoE. He's single target. I like him. I think some people probably don't like him because they think he, they, he needs a little bit more. Um, but as a support role, I think he's perfectly fine. Um, probably not. I know it's not the sexiest thing in the, in the world to be, which is a very solid support, but I think he's extremely solid at what he does. And finally, we have King Protea here. She has a very interesting mechanic where she, this uh, skill right here gives her this proliferate um, buff. 
And for each stack of it, she gets more HP from it. As you can see here, it's 3,000. And then she can use her second skill to remove those stacks um, and reduce her own skill cooldown by one and then give herself MP charge of 20% or 10%, depending on what level you have it, um, per stack lost. Um, this also has a, t a 10 cooldown, but it's because she gets constant HP, and she is, of course, also Alter Ego, so she's effective against the classes mentioned before. And then her third skill is Monster Strength VX, which uh, increases her own attack for three turns. It's 40% at skill 10 and 20% at skill 1. Passive skills of Mad Enhancement, Independent Action B, Territory Creation, God Assistance A, and High Servant, even though High Servant doesn't do anything, um, are very good. Her Noble Phantasm is called Arif Ar King Size. She turns very big, the colossal silhouette coming out from the Ocean of Life. Um, if Proliferate buff is present, further increase on Buster performance by 20% for one turn and deals damage to all enemies. So she deals 300% at NP level 1 and at LMP level 5, 500%. And then the increase to Unbruster performance for one turn is also 20%, and that's a charge of 100. And then she also gets, again, the charge for if the proliferate buff is active. I'm pretty sure that doesn't count as... Actually, I'm not 100%. Either way, it activates first, which is good, because that means she gets the power up before she deals damage. She deals damage, which is good. And then she has two busters, two arts, and one quick. She's a very interesting servant because she basically gets non-stop HP, um, which is very fun. But she's also Buster gameplay, so she could be used with uh, Merlin, of course. I think very interesting unit. Not a lot of units like her for very good reason. So she can be very fun to play with. And again, she's effective against those three classes, so she can be very useful for you. Um, against longer quests, she would definitely be useful too, I would think, because she would just get crazy high HP. I think we've I've seen Japanese players get her HP at a crazy amount. Because if I'm right, I don't think Proliferate leaves. No, it's for 10 turns. No, no, she gives herself Endless Proliferation Regeneration buff for 10 turn. And then Endless Proliferate grants self-proliferation until the end of turn. And then Proliferate increases on max HP permanently, max 10 stacks. So yeah, it's a maximum amount, but it only goes to 10, yes. But then I think when she gets a buff later on, which changes everything, it makes her better, basically. Um, I like her, though. I like King Protea. It's hard not to like. I like a lot of units whenever they're doing something different, and she's definitely doing something different. So for me personally, I do like her. I don't like her enough to... <laughs> probably actually go crazy summoning for her because again as mentioned i need to wait for kama and i wouldn't mind having her be on the alter ego side of um the gssr because i definitely would love it if she showed up in the gssr but in terms of the you for the crazy year that's fake grand order um north america this year filled with like crazy hype units you have to start making some cost, and for me, it's going to have to be, unfortunately, skipping, skipping King Protea. Mainly because I have plenty of CEs from the first time I tried to summon Melt and failed. So, that's just me, though. So, that yeah, that's basically the event. That's the Servants in a nutshell. It is a mission-style event, so it takes a while. There's a very special, uh, like, um, boss fight in it. Um, and it can take a lot of... It's a very interesting boss fight. That's all what I'll say for now, because it is kind of a, it is a kind of a fun mystery. I think it's maybe the one of the best boss fights in North America at this time. So, it's a fight against the main boss, which you'll find out when you play the event for sure. So, yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. I'm sorry if it feels a little bit weird. I'm not feeling very good today, and I can't explain why. Uh, it's weird, but either way, I hope you like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out